This is TTELT Teaching Tips for English Language Teachers. I'm Dr. Gina Rhodes. Let's get started. This week on TTLT, we have lots going on. But before we begin our interview with Eileen Hale, I'd like to tell you a little bit about TTLT Talks. TTLT Talks is a new uh, um, thing that we're starting this month with TTLT. Um, we would like for our teachers to get much more involved in TTLT and tell us what you would like to, to know and give a chance to really talk to other teachers. So we're starting a monthly discussion with English language teachers and we're going to have it on the last Saturday of each month. If there are any changes in that, we'll let you know. But that's our plan is that it's going to be the last Saturday of each month. That means that this month, our first TTLT talk is going to be January 30th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So right now we're just going to do one at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But if this isn't a good time for you or you have lots of ideas and you would like to do this more than just one time a month, let us know and we'll see if we can expand it in the future. But right now we're gonna give this a try and see how much, how many people are interested in talking to us. And we would like to talk about issues that are related to our field. And we would like to discuss our ideas for future TTLT episodes. We'd like to hear your opinions. Um, such as what is most important to you as a teacher or someone in your field? What is it that you would like to know more about? And who would you like us to interview? If you um, have ideas for someone that you would like us to interview, or if you have a topic that you would like to learn about, we would like to hear from you so that we are helping you with the things that you want to learn. So tell us what you would like to learn more about and that will help us. And um, the best way to sign up for TTLT Talks is to go to our workshop page. I've added a, a section of the workshop page just for TTLT Talks, so you can register there for TTLT Talks and join us to, for our first TTLT Talk on January 30th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We hope to see you there. And this week on TTLT, I'm very, very excited to um, announce our inter interviewer. And this is Eileen Hale. And Eileen Hale um, is also an English language specialist with the English language programs at the State Department, just like me. And she's also been an English language fellow. She was in Albania. And so um, we have a lot in common. And the most important thing that we have in common is that she wants to be part of TTLT. So she's already got one company of her own that she'll be talking a little bit about in this episode called Create Connections Consulting. And um, you'll learn a little bit about that. But she and I are going to be collaborating on TTLT. So this is only the first of many interviews that you will hear with Eileen Hale. So please enjoy this first interview and learn a bit about Eileen Hale. But don't be surprised when you see her again in future episodes. <laughs> Let's get started. Hi, Eileen. How's it going? Great. How are you, Gina? I'm doing great. Hey, Eileen, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, where to start? <laughs> um, I live in Florida now, but I was born and raised in California. And I've been teaching English as a second or foreign language for over 30 years. I originally studied French as my second language and later switched to Spanish. And have also learned some Romanian and Indonesian. So I love learning languages and cultures. I have my doctorate degree in international and multicultural education and have worked as an English language specialist in Belize and South Korea. And last year I worked as an English language fellow in Albania, besides other <laughs> career paths I've had. <laughs> Quick summary. Thank you. Well, that's great. You've been doing so much in the field. So I know that our listeners are going to enjoy learning from your expertise and your experience. Thanks. Looking forward to sharing. And today we're, you wanted to talk to us about some teaching tips using music. What got you interested in using music with your students? So great question. Um, last year when I was in Albania, it really triggered me for a couple of reasons. 
I have to also say that even before Albania, I've always been intrigued with how people from other countries learn English so well without having left their country. And I do remember even when I was living in Mexico City in uh, 2000 to 2001, people spoke English really well, um, with people I was working with, and I would always ask them, how did you learn English? And 90% of the time, the answer was music or TV. And that stuck with me since, you know, for the last 20 years. But in particular, last year when I was in Albania, I was really, really, again, struck with this concept of music because Albanians spoke such good English without even, you know, most people from different countries, everybody has an accent usually from their language of origin. Whereas Albanians had very little detectable accent, I would say, and that caught my attention as a linguist, as a, somebody who loves studying and learning languages. And so I kept probing this question. I was like, why do Albanians speak such good English? Particularly because as a country, they've had a lot less access to leaving the country for many years and being um, able to be exposed to native English speakers in the same way that other European countries have been able to. So with that said, I pursued um, that question in depth while I was doing my fellowship. And I came away with a lot of people listen to a lot of American music, particularly American music, not a bias. So there's obviously English from many different countries around the world, um, but they have a fascination with American music and American movies and TV shows, but music was what caught my attention. So I kept pursuing it and uh, I was doing teacher training with both graduate students and teachers across Albania. And so I started kind of playing with the idea more, integrating it into my workshops and um, talking a lot with the students and teachers in Albania about how and why to integrate music. And the more I played with it, if you will, the more positive feedback I got and was able to create some, I think, engaging workshops and things that it just kept perpetuating the idea to expand it further and further. Wow. Okay. So um, talk to us about some ways that you've used music uh, with your students. I think you so, said you had some slides to show us. Yeah, and um, before I jump into the slides, I was going to mention um, one thing I've been exploring is this Anchor a podcast. Mm -hmm. That is a great way to integrate music as part of a podcast, and they're really easy uh, to create, and there you can do them with clips of songs that are public songs and Anchor already has access to a lot of songs that have been you know, publicly shared with Anchor. So it's a great way to be able to get clips of songs into your podcast and create the podcast around the song, if you will, for a teaching technique for your students. So I use that and I can share those with you later. Um, as well as um, graduate students I worked with letting them pick their songs. Mm -hmm. So I'll share, I guess, my PowerPoint with you and then we can expand upon that. Okay, uh, great. Let me just share my screen, my button to share a screen. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, share screen. There we go. Okay. Now I'm on my, do you see my, there, there we go. We're Where getting there. Go? Okay. <laughs> All right, so, take it away. Okay, this is a, a preview for a workshop down the road, but uh, as I developed workshops around the concept of how and why to integrate music, the, one of the first questions always is the why, right? So it really dawned on me that no culture is without music. It's a really universal language, and you can read this quote, but as we all know, we integrate music into so many ceremonies and aspects of our life, even studying or whatever we're doing. Most of us probably find it hard to be without music if you're especially alone by yourself during COVID. Um, so with that said, I was as an educator thinking, well, why not intentionally integrate it more uh, into English classrooms because I remember learning a French song when I was a kid, you know, Pharaoh Jaca, and I still remember it. I won't tell you how many years later I am, <laughs> but uh, that concept of, I think we, we use songs a lot with kids, but we 
drop off that concept as we get into teaching with high schoolers or adults, or elder population, the elderly, no. And I think it's just as valid with all age groups and maybe even more so. I mean, obviously it's really easy with young kids, but it's also super easy and fun way to integrate with adult educators, adult learners, I should say, sorry. So I was gonna give just a quick um, example, also the why to integrate it. It's an inductive approach. So I said you can do it whatever level your students are at, beginner, beginners, you can play. I'm gonna play a couple of genres of music for you. Great. I wanted to just show you a couple of examples of how I do it. Um, you can just set the stage at the beginning, at the end of a class. You can have them do something as simple as write an adjective as you listen to this piece of music. And or if you have advanced students, you can say write a paragraph on what this makes you feel or think. So you can uh, adapt it to whatever level of your students. I'm going to like play in a quick example of a few quick examples. And when I do this, I'll talk a little bit about how and why I chose different genres of music. Obviously, you could choose your own genres would be applicable to your population of students. Um, I try to pick one that's a popular American genre and or a classic music. Um, obviously, that evokes one feeling. Uh, it's a classic one that a lot of people globally have heard and like. Um, so, Again, I try to find music that's somewhat popular globally or known globally. Mm -hmm. What would I do without your smart mouth? Drawing me in and you kicking me out. It's really fun to show a YouTube of a song because, again, you can do this many, many different ways. And that's why I love incorporating music too. You can do it just with a YouTube and let people think for themselves, or you can do the karaoke version. Okay, that's one. Um, this is one I chose because of my work in Albania. She's Albanian and uh, a beautiful singer. And obviously it kind of evokes adjectives even seeing her. So, um, and the musicians are really amazing. They just capture your attention and imagination. Um, so that's why I chose that one. <laughs> and the music doesn't have to always be in English. Again, this is like evoking feelings and thoughts. And that's one thing as you're doing this is to think about, you can do a song in whatever your first language is in the country where you may be teaching English and then bring in an English song or do an English translation of the song if it fits, not all songs do, but there are a lot of songs that have been translated in different languages. And uh, the last one uh, was more for completely different sense and feeling of drums and African rhythms. So moving on from that, I just wanted to give that quick glimpse of how I incorporate different songs. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And why and how music stimulates the brain and it stores patterns in the brain for long-term memory and also for motivation. It gets people just engaged in the learning process. I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly, but just to give you a quick theoretical background, the workshop will go into this in much more detail. Um, but for those of you teachers, we know fundamentals of our degrees in teaching English as a second language or foreign language, the importance of building on prior knowledge, Music usually does that because again, you can tap into the students, the music that they're listening to. And most students globally are listening to some music in English, whether it be American or other countries, but uh, it can tap into their prior knowledge, builds, provides comprehensible input for them because they're already listening to it and thinking about it. It offers interaction so students can sing with the music, dance along if you want, whatever you want to do, <laughs> they can pantomime. Um, and it creates for uh, ambiance for sheltered techniques, again, where they can sing a choral, choral repetition together or have them break into groups and sing different lyrics, that kind of thing. It's great for a way to lower inhibitions, your affective filter, <laughs> and bring confidence to students that might not want to speak, and you've got a lot of, especially in big classes, you could still have them take turns. And it, uh, I know Gina did a WhatsApp chat 
discussion recently and workshop and it would be a great way you could have groups um, sing their own, create their own lyrics and then sing for each other. Um, but when you're not singing alone, it creates that safe environment. It motivates them to creatively learn language and discover language that they want to speak about if they have to create their own lyrics. And it teaches the grammar and vocabulary inductively moving outside of that lovely textbook we all like. <laughs> so, um, and everybody's always listening on their own. Just want to add some fun memes here. It also can create conversation builders for context. You can talk about like Mariah Carey's hero uh, song, what's a hero in your country? So you can build a whole lesson around a song and the theme of the song. And obviously listening to the song creates natural intonation and pronunciation and learning of these things and idiomatic expressions. So that people subconsciously learn them before you're actively teaching them. And it allows for natural language fluency. So I'm trying not to read my PowerPoint to you, but just to kind of cover these points. Um, and again, everybody can listen at their own place with their masks on now. <laughs> Uh, but research does show the more that you use music um, to assist language learning, the more accurately they can become like embedded in their learning. And they can rely less on lectures and or just specifically textbook learning. So I'm going to give uh, one quick example for you. And if you'd like to join my workshop, which I'll tell you about at the end of this interview, we'll go into a lot more examples for different levels of English learners and how to incorporate it into your lessons, existing lessons. So this is just one simple, quick example I wanted to share with you. Again, a kind of a template for a very simply, a simple modified lesson plan. If you can see this visually, I chose the song Lemon Tree. And this was a song that actually I was using in Albania. And again, I asked my students what American songs do they like, and they came up with this. And so I said, okay, great. And I listened to the song and I quickly noticed there was a lot of present continuous tense in the song. So I thought, perfect, we'll focus on this tense of the verb, uh, sing it together, have them identify the ING verbs they hear while they're listening to it, and then ask them to create their own lyrics for it. And they can pantomime them, they can sing them, model them however they want um, and share that with you. So. What I do is have them listen to the song first. And this is an example. I have a podcast with this too, which we can share with you as a quick example of how I do it. Um, I'm sitting here in the boring room. It's just another rainy Sunday afternoon. I'm wasting my time. I got nothing to do. I'm hanging around. I'm waiting for you, but not. <laughs> How many of us are in that position right now? <laughs> okay, so um, with a partner, I would first have them, like I said, identify all the ING verbs that they hear in the song and write those down and discuss those. After that, then uh, they would choose verbs uh, to do with somebody else. Obviously, they can do this alone, but it's fun to do with somebody else. And, you know, for example, I'm waving at you, I'm waving my hand. They have to choose verbs that they can act out for you and uh, that fit the lyrics of the song so that they can sing along with the same tune. And again- That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> that really helps their retention with it. Um, I'm smiling right now, I'm smiling at you, whatever the case might be, right? But you can uh, elaborate that on your own. So, um, I'm going to then quickly talk about, and we'll jump back to whatever other questions Gina has. What I suggest for students, um, I ask, or excuse me, for teachers, is I ask you as teachers to learn about your students' musical preferences, because if we just bring all the music, it may or may not tap into their prior knowledge and or the knowledge that they're really interested in learning. So you want to tap into what they want to learn, right? And it builds connections to what they already are listening to. So I think that's really important. And it creates a community of learners for you where their fun assignment I like to give them is you put them in groups or pairs. And again, you can do this obviously individually, have them choose songs, submit them to you, and you can select obviously based on criteria. Uh, I tell the students criteria to find like short and simple songs, like Lemon Tree is a good one, 
obviously based on your student's level that has kind of a catchy chorus that's not too complicated, that's not inappropriate, that has um, not too many idiomatic expressions that people don't understand, but also that enhances the concepts that you're already trying to teach in your class and creates the atmosphere you wanna have in your class. This is, if you're looking at this visually, um, just a, a template for how to create a lesson plan. But again, we'll go into this a lot further when we have a workshop on this topic um, in really, Quick synopsis, what I do usually is have them listen to it first without seeing it for to understand what they already know, what they can capture audio with just the audio. And then I give them a visual link. And again, you can do this with the YouTube way without the words or the karaoke style so they can see it, so do both of those versions and then allow them to create their own lyrics is the fun part that I find such that they can perform them and teach them to somebody else. And again, that really, solidifies the learning when they have to teach their lyrics to others. So that's a quick synopsis and uh, I, we've got some resources for you that uh, Gina will post in our notes. Oh, let's talk about the resources. It looks like you've got AmericanEnglish.state.gov is the first one and I love their sing out loud traditional songs. Those are great. I've used several of them. They're really good. And yeah. what is this one? Um, a a O G A K U. Uh, that's a, okay. yeah, you don't have to read the whole thing. That's actually a yeah. book that I found in uh, a TESOL conference last year. TESOL oh, International really? is a great book. They have, and it's on, there's an online version of it. So I sent you the link for that. Mm -hmm. um, but it has a lot of lessons already created for you. So oh, I see. Yeah. It's, it says the, uh, um, it's a book um, teaching with music. Um, yeah. Cool. I love it. Yeah, that's okay. Great... And oh, yeah, we'll definitely put all these links in the notes so that people can get that. So it looks like you've got a lot of things. And Tafel Tunes, what's that? Uh, again, it's just a website where they've done a lot of the homework for you, if you will. You can plug in, you know, I've got beginners uh, and I want the ING tense of the verb, whatever, or the past tense for advanced students or past perfect tense. And they have already done the homework and they'll send have a song link for you and uh, some of these websites also have uh, a lesson plan for you or the, the downloadable lyrics for you so you don't have to go searching for those and that kind of thing the american okay. english state.gov has a lot of pre-made lessons for you as well right. with the links attached for the lyrics and lessons yeah oh and i love that you've got jazz chants up there too those are also so great yeah I'm helping helping with the rhythm and, and um, vocabulary with students. That's great. Um, yeah, I like this. And I hadn't, I haven't used TEFL tunes before. So this is a new one for me. I'm excited. <laughs> now I want to try it. <laughs> great. great. Um, uh, anything else that you wanted to talk about um, regarding um, using songs or music with your students? Um. I guess we'll just talk about maybe joining one of our workshops and we'll go much more in depth into specific ways to really engage the students and creating lesson plans. I think one of the points of resistance, if you will, that I hear sometimes from teachers is that they don't have time to put it into a lesson. And I counter that <laughs> resistance with, yes, you do. It's a matter of how you structure it. And right. actually it can really enhance your lesson more than detract from it or take time from it. It can build in and you can also make it as a homework assignment and then discuss it as part of the class um, and build it in. It, it's a great way to have them do things outside of class. So, and again, like I said, to set the stage for the class and it brings down that affective filter. So I highly encourage teachers to incorporate it into almost every class, every lesson, even if it's background music, but it's something that really affects the ambiance of your class. And I mean, we could play music right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. I know with um, my students, uh, I they love when I give them their homework assignment is that they have to do a lyrics training song. Yeah. And so um, I love lyricstraining.com. And if their homework is lyrics training, they're like, yeah, give us another song. And then sometimes I'll have them tell me what song that they want to do, what, what song they want to learn. And then um, after they have played the game, 
um, with the song and they play, they do it several times because it's a competition and they're trying to get the high score. Uh, then we'll sing the song together in class. Now that they know they know the words, then we when we come back into class, then we'll we'll um, talk we'll sing it. It's a lot of fun. Yes. And um, you mentioned the workshop. Um, when is the workshop that you were going to do for TCLT? Um, we were talking about February. February twenty sixth. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so um, Friday, February 26th at 4 p.m. EST, we can learn more from Eileen about how to use music. And um, she's going to walk us through how she designs a lesson using music with her students. I'm really excited. That's going to be fun. Thanks. And if any of you, we coordinate with you ahead of time, we can incorporate some of your songs. If you yeah. want to send us a song ahead of the workshop, I could give an example of how to integrate it into a lesson. So That's a great idea. When Gina gives uh, the details of how to reach me and that kind of thing, uh, feel free to reach out to me. And I'd love to work with you if you like, you know, have a song that you really want to incorporate and you're not sure how to or what to do, uh, send it to me and I'd love to brainstorm ideas with you or even create a podcast with you. So I'm all about collaborating and creating things together with other English language teachers out there. All right, and um, can you tell us your email so that students can contact you? Yes, my name is Eileen Hale and my email is eileenhale at gmail.com. That right. is spelled with an A, A-I-L-E-E-N-H-A-L-E -E -E at gmail.com. That's great. And you definitely were going to put that in the, in the notes as well, if you didn't catch it. Um, but yeah, that'll be great. And so um, what other projects are you, you've mentioned a podcast. How can we find the podcast that you mentioned? Yeah, it's on Anchor. And mm -hmm. I'll have, uh, ask Gina if she could put that into our link. I'll put a link in it. Yeah. Links, yeah, as well. And I just started creating these kind of for fun during this lovely COVID time of being stuck at home for so many hours, uh, but found it was really fun to do. And uh, the students that I shared them with enjoyed listening to them. So, you know, maybe we could all start adding to them. Uh, you guys can listen to mine and share one back and we can keep adding them to share with our English language learners. Um, that sounds great. Does it, does your podcast have a title? Um, this one was like the lemon tree. I mean the, the series of podcasts, you don't have like an over, it's just. Ooh, link one has a, languages. Yeah. I haven't okay. formalized it yet, but I <laughs> can do that. You motivate me to formalize it. <laughs> Why not? I how much uh, traction it got, but uh, yeah, love to take it to the next level. Okay, great. Well, it sounds like a great project. And I, I, yeah, I hope that you are able to, to take it to the next level and, and make it more available to more people so that um, maybe English language learners can learn from it and teachers as well. And um, what other projects are you working on? Um, I've created a couple online teacher training professional development courses during this uh -huh. COVID time. Uh -huh. And one is called Engaging and Motivating Your English Language Learners for Academic Success. And the other is called Memories and Dreams, Honoring Your Past and uh -huh. Designing Your Future. And these are both geared towards English language learners. However, the second one can be adapted to all different types of populations. It was originally created for refugees learning English dealing with traumatic memories and working towards amazing future dreams. So um, that said, it's been adapted to many different contexts of students and that's been hosted through, it's a Canvas is the platform. They're hosted through Northwest Nazarene, it's nnu.edu, University in Idaho, but anybody mm -hmm. can access them online. And they're one credit professional development courses. Okay. And they are asynchronistic, meaning you can start and end whenever you want at your own pace, which is really nice during this time too. So you just, we have pre-recorded uh, PowerPoint lesson, lessons of workshops, if you will. You listen to those at your own convenience and then you submit your homework, if you will, <laughs> back to me, your assignments at your own time as well. So they're really nice for, even if you're working and need a professional development course credit. 
that's great. And we're definitely going to put the links to those courses in, in the notes as well. So people can find those. Okay, great. You and I are going to be creating another one for online <laughs> learning for ELL and foreign language learning. So stay tuned yeah. for that. Yes, yes, yes. That's definitely in the works. So, but uh, we will, will, we will be notifying you when that course is ready. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And um, you said you have a website. Did you want to tell us your website? Yes, it's uh, createconnections.net, but it's, um, so obviously the word create, C-R-E-A-T-E, mm -hmm. hyphen, is in the middle, connections, C-O-N-N-E-C-T-I-O-N-S, mm -hmm. dot net, N-E-T, mm -hmm. and I've done a lot of other types of work, so you'll see <laughs> other works and workshops and things that I've been involved in. But feel free to reach out to me if you'd like to. My contact information is there, as well as here, my email and all that. And you can contact okay. me. Okay, yeah. that's great. Well, thanks so much, Eileen. We really, um, I really learned a lot myself, and I hope that our listeners will benefit a lot from from all of this that you've told us. And I hope that they're excited about the workshop. Me too. Thank you. And I'd love to hear from anyone and hear your feedback and songs that you've used and we can keep building this platform for others. But thanks yeah, for your time today, Gina. I appreciate you interviewing me. Wow, we sure learned a lot from Eileen on using music in the classroom. I know I'm excited to try out some of the tips that she gave us. Let's review some of the top teaching tips. One thing that she talked about was asking students what kind of music they like and then incorporating that music into your courses. You can't always use the ones that your students suggest, but it's definitely a good idea to find out from them what kind of artists they like, what kind of music they're listening to. Um, students uh, that I've worked with really love when I use a song that they like and that they would like to understand better. Uh, so I, I often use songs that my students suggest in the classroom. Um, she also talked about selecting songs that are appropriate for your student's level. That's really important. So you don't want to get something that's got a lot of vocabulary they don't know or is maybe too fast for the level of your students. So think about that. But as your students progress and are, if you're working with more advanced students, then you do want to use those um, faster songs and uh, words with more lyrics. And of course, adapt the activities to your student level. You Notice she talked about how you could have them listen for adjectives or write an adjective about the song that you're listening to, or if more advanced students write a paragraph about the song that you're listening to. She has a lot of great ideas. And I think my favorite tip <laughs> was tefltunes.com. I haven't used this one before, but I know I'm going to really soon. And I hope my students will enjoy uh, doing the activities that are on TEFL Tunes. I'm really excited. And I'm also really excited that Eileen is going to do a workshop for TTLT uh, talking about using music in the classroom. So she's going to be talking about some of the tips that she discussed um, in this episode, but also going to give us a lot more tips on how to use um, music in our classroom. So I'm really excited about that. And that's going to be Friday, February 26th at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So hopefully we'll see you there uh, at the workshop. Don't forget, February 26th, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We also have the TTLT workshop coming up with uh, Katam and Maria. They're going to be talking about how to start an English or ESL club at your school. Oh, I hope to see you for that one. And of course, if you want to get more involved with the TTLT team, or if you have any comments or suggestions, anything you'd like to tell us, please send us a voicemail at our website, um, ttlt.org, or you can email me at ttltinfo at gmail.com. You can go to our website to find out more about our podcast and our YouTube channel. Please subscribe to both or whichever one you prefer, podcast or YouTube channel. Join us on our Facebook group, it's TTLT. Follow us on Twitter at TTLT1 and on Instagram at T.TELT. And if you're enjoying TLT and you're finding these uh, episodes helpful, 
we would love it if you could donate to help us keep TLT going. Uh, please feel free to go to patreon.com slash TTLT and donate as much as you like there. GoFundMe, we have a GoFundMe page uh, that's um, TTLT as well. And we have um, a PayPal page, so you can do PayPal.me slash TTLT to donate there. And of course, all the links are on our website at ttlt.org. We'd really appreciate your help. Thanks again for tuning in. See you next time.